What is the most common problem you encounter when you sit down to edit audio? Uh, yeah, broad, broad question. Uh, there's a lot that it could be. <laughs> What's up, storytellers? I'm Jay Shear, co-writer of the Amazon top-selling time travel novel, Time Slingers. I have it on the desk next to me, actually. And also um, co-writer, director, and co-producer of the full cast audio book of Death of a Bounty Hunter on the wall here behind me. Today's video is part of a much larger e-learning course that I'm developing about how to self-publish your own audiobook. So whether you're a self-published author, you want to do your own reading, or maybe you're a narrator working with a self-published author and you're working on an audiobook together, this is for how to get the best possible sound when it comes to your post-production and your editing, and maybe even some setup things you can do to have really better sound. I have two audio professionals joining me on this discussion. The goal we have here, the three of us are going to talk about this specific goal, is to get a professional level sounding audiobook. And we're really targeting this conversation at self-published authors or even narrators who are working on a project who are trying to get the best possible uh, sound. So that's really our goal is that what is the best quality sound that we can get. So whether you are a writer or you were hired by a writer, the goal here is to get killer sound for our audiobook. And so before I get into any specific question, I want to ask a broad question as it pertains to some of the audio that you've heard before as you've worked on either podcasts or, or audiobooks. What is the most common problem? If we're reverse engineering this situation, what is the most common problem you encounter when you sit down to edit audio? Uh, yeah, broad, broad question. Uh, there's a lot that it could be, <laughs> right, right? Honestly, um, but so a pretty common uh, occurrence that I see in, in when when the audio is bad hmm. um, usually comes from um, people not checking their work in the in the first place. Ah. So let's say like this is. This is the recording device. I hit record on it and <laughs> that's it. Like they, they don't check their levels. They don't check, uh, you know, like uh, room noise or if they're outside, they don't, you know, not paying attention to like, oh, there's garbage trucks going by or there's an airplane <laughs> <laughs> going over. And then they hand it over to you and go, oh, we noticed this uh, after, um, you know, do you, do you, can you fix that? It, you know, in post, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fix it in post is something that should not be in your vocabulary <laughs> at all. Like, not even post production people should have that in, <laughs> in their vocabulary. It should just be like, "Can I fix it now?" Yeah, uh, is it should be the um, should be the philosophy. But um, yeah, for me. It's usually like the bad audio comes from people who are just being negligent on the day, right? Um, that's being recorded, right? So how? So know what the environment you're in is, what's happening there, and be right. aware of your equipment in the context of the environment. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's good. Mm -hmm. What about you, Izzy? What's mm -hmm. what's the of all the common of the most common problem that you encounter when you get audio from somebody else to edit? Um, you know. It's just like Nick, I'm like, man, there's a there's a good handful <laughs> yeah, yeah. to go through. But I think you did well, Nick, to just kind of say, you know, just li listen back um, because you'll hear them. If I were to pick one, I'm gonna I'll start with a specific one and then I'll yeah. just kind of broaden it out. Okay. But uh, is poor choice of room to record uh, in. Sure. I can't tell you how many recordings I get. And it's a person recording in what sounds like a room whose ceilings, walls, and floors are all made of tile. And yeah. <laughs> all the words are slurring together. And I try to clean it up as best as I can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody, they talk dynamically. And they talk down here. And they talk up here. And at some point, they're going to be matched together. And I didn't get the whole of your sentence because a lot of those words in the middle are, are just a blob. So uh, looking out for stuff like that, but uh, yeah, I mean, the fix it and post thing should really just, just everybody <laughs> just get rid of that. I, I did a, I did a, a podcast a couple of months ago. It's not usually live, but that particular episode, uh, the client didn't tell us, but it was live. Oh. Um, and it was, 
killed me because he he and his guests were set up on stage and they were in front of like an audience of their university students or something. Mm-hmm. And instead of just doing intro and then interview, he addressed the plane. This is a recording. Uh, you are recording. You're being recorded right now. I'm going to interview him. I'm going to do an introduction for him. But he he continued to tell the audience. And if you laugh or sneeze or do something and while he's talking, don't worry about. It. We'll edit it out in post. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, you can't just understand that you know, we have tools and tricks and stuff, but. If if two things are overlapping, I can't separate those out when they're on the same recording. So yep. mm-hmm. make sure you have a cluster of noises going on all at the same time when you only want your own voice to be heard. <laughs> right. That's really good. That's really good. Yeah. And when you preface when you preface a crew or you preface an audience or something with like you can like don't worry about messing up or don't <laughs> worry about things happening, then they they really won't. Yeah, <laughs> you know they'll just let it rip. So right, they'll just go for it and not worry mm-hmm. about it at all. Yeah. So for me, I found um, three things to be the biggest issues. Uh, one is a person's audio setup. So which is kind of what you guys are saying. Like they're just not in the right place. They don't have the right gear. They don't know how to use their gear. And it hasn't been properly set up. So definitely set up your gear. And I have a separate video on gear and how to make sure you have the right kind of gear to record this kind of stuff. The other thing that I have is uh, that the person doing the recording uh, doesn't really have a clear vision for what's wanted, for what they want out of their project. And so, for example, if it's a self-published author, do they know what kind of voice they're bringing to the table for their project or know what the entire full story is and where the story goes and how the story should end and how the story is going to work itself out along the way? If there's not a clear vision for what the end product will be, then it makes for a very difficult uh, interaction. And this, this is probably even more true when you have other narrators coming in. If you have other narrators coming in who don't really get the vibe of the project, they don't really understand the project, then this whole negotiation between the author and the narrator are just, they're on totally different pages. And it just doesn't, the end product isn't good because they there's too much else going on here. Um, and then the third thing I have is poor preparation. And so this is for... This is not even necessarily in regards to, I'll talk about this more as we go along, but it's not even necessarily in regards to the sound. This can be just the recording sounds sloppy because the people who were supposed to show up and do the recording didn't prepare very well. They don't know what the script is supposed to be. They're not taking the time out of their day to make the schedule time so they sound rushed or they sound hurried. All of these things that go into, you know, there's one thing when you hit record, that's one moment, but there's a bunch of moments that happen before you ever hit record. and, and